Praise be Jesus Christ, and thank you for joining me for Lexio on the Go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our scripture readings are taken from Romans 15, 4 through 13, and the Gospel of Matthew 11, 2 through 10. Um, special focus really on this video are not those two readings particularly, but Isaiah 19, 1, which is a part of the breviary readings uh, for the second week um, in Advent. And that verse, 19, 1, says... Uh, behold, the Lord will ascend upon a swift cloud and will enter into Egypt. Again, I want to focus on this. Behold, the Lord will ascend upon a swift cloud and will enter into Egypt. And almost everything here I'm taking from uh, Bishop uh, Angrazani, who um, is, is a great commentary. He's a bishop writing to his priest, and um, I really like reading his commentary. So I'm going to share with you some of his, his thoughts uh, that he was writing towards his priest, uh, giving them some, um, obviously, some edification and material for their faithful um, in, their, in their parishes. Um, but he explains that this is a great type. So we have this uh, cloud that is going to be um, uh, basically coming into Egypt. And the, the Egypt has always kind of, because of the Israelites being enslaved, it has been a place of exile. That the Israelites were exiled into Egypt uh, for, I think, 400 and something years, maybe longer. And then, of course, uh, you have the Babylonian exile. So there's this time where the chosen people are in exile. This is definitely us. We are in exile here in this world. Um, this world is a type of Egypt, and we are uh, making our way to heaven, which is the promised land. So just think of Egypt as the exile, okay? Um, and so the cloud, what is the cloud that will come into our exile? And the, the cloud that will come into our exile, we can see this in three ways. We can see the cloud as Mary itself. Um, and what is it that Mary is carrying? Well, um, what do clouds carry? Clouds carry water. Clouds carry light. Clouds carry shade. So there's all this kind of, or, or what they carry. We can almost think of um, Jesus, um, you know, of course, Mary as the God bearer that has conceived our Lord. She is bearing Jesus and bringing Jesus to us. So this gentle, wonderful, uh, 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 gentle is the best word I can think of, like a cloud. It looks very gentle and humble, um, carrying Jesus to the world bringing, and this is a perfect uh, reflection, of course, from Isaiah for the Advent season. Um, okay, so let's, let's, let's just talk about, in a sense here, um, what do clouds do? Uh, what do we see them doing? And I'm not an expert on clouds, but um, maybe if someone is, they can uh, comment and, and teach me a few things here. But um, we know that the sun can, can penetrate a cloud. So if you have a cloud and the score, of course, in the, in the atmosphere, the sunlight can go through and penetrate through that cloud without impairing the cloud, without um, destroying the cloud at all, right? So the sun penetrates the cloud without impairing it, just as grace builds upon and perfects nature. So grace um, comes into our nature and does not impair our nature, does not destroy our nature. Very important to understand this, that um, our Lord respects our free will. He has given us free will so that we can choose him. We can receive this grace and the grace builds upon our natural abilities. The perfect example of this would be the natural virtues, prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance. Those, are, those can be increased by your own natural ability. You can have unbaptized people that are very prudent, just, temperate, and practice fortitude. Um, what will happen when grace, though, penetrates their life? When grace comes in through, through baptism and the sacraments, it just it, it penetrates and then elevates. It penetrates and elevates. It doesn't destroy. Very important. I think that's the first lesson to realize. Um, same thing when um, when our Lord, when the, when the, when when Mary said yes, and the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, our Lord was conceived in her womb. Again, that grace doesn't destroy Mary. It penetrates, elevates, fills her with grace. So we want to, as disciples, we want to be like that. Um, Okay, so let's go through a few things, and, and I'm going to particularly talk about uh, Mary being the cloud, the priest being the cloud, and the Eucharist being the cloud. So maybe first I want to kind of focus on that, and then we'll, we'll, we'll unpack that, and you can look at the notes here. So how is Mary the cloud? Well, Mary carries Jesus, literally. That's how she's the cloud. That one's a pretty easy one. Um, how is the priest like a cloud? Well, the priest... 
uh, will be the ones giving us the sacraments. The priest particularly will bring Jesus down, right, um, in the Mass on the altar, as well as the forgiveness of sins, in a sense, bringing those down, applying those to our life through the absolution. Um, and so the priest is like, um, basically like this, this channel of grace, but they're also a cistern. In other words, they carry the grace with them in their priesthood, and then they distribute it to the faithful, distributing it primarily through the sacraments. Um, and then, of course, most beautifully, and this even is kind of characterized in that little, simple, white host. That white host is like a cloud that descends, that comes down to us. And so the Eucharist is like this cloud. Looks very uh, simple, um, very humble, but packed with substantially God. That is God that we're receiving. We are receiving the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord. And so you have this uh, simplicity, this humility of Mary. Jesus is inside her. You have this man, a priest, forgiveness of sins and the power to turn bread into the body is in him. That power is in him, given to him. And then we have the simplicity of the host, which to a common eye looks like nothing but yet it is everything. Jesus Christ, all in all, everything. So I, I love this, uh, again, you know, when you look at a cloud, you look at something that just is very simple, very, if you could say, humble. Um, and, and, and that's also true of Mary, of our priest, and of the Blessed Sacrament. So let's kind of go through this. Um, what does a what what do clouds do? Well, they illuminate. Um, when the light shines through a cloud, in a sense, I'm not sure how this works scientifically, but I guess the water molecules kind of magnify the light, and and it becomes kind of like another source of light. It's not another source, but it kind of magnifies, and that's of course what Mary does. Mary is full of grace. She magnifies the Lord. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. Magnificat. I'm magnifying. And so we want to be like Mary. We want to be a cloud. We need to be a cloud where, where the light of Christ can come into us and we can magnify that light. Um, and this is kind of interesting because at one of the Fatima apparitions, I'm not sure which one, but one of the monthly apparitions, uh, Mary appears um, on a cloud. We see this in art a lot where, where, where these, these clouds are around. Also, what do clouds do? Well, this is probably the most common thing we know about clouds is they give us water. They give us moisture. They are, they give us this refreshing water. And this is what a priest does. A good holy priest will be like a cistern that holds grace. The priest himself should hold grace and be a bearer of grace where the grace is always in them and then it just slowly flows out to us. Um, but as it flows out to us, they never empty because of their daily prayers. Um, you may not know, but a priest commits to praying the liturgy of the hours. The priest commits to the holy sacrifice of the mass. The priest, in and of their calling to holy orders, the reason it's called holy orders is because it orders them to holiness. Why should that individual priest be ordered to holiness so they can be full of grace and be that cistern in which then those graces can be distributed to us? They're faithful most perfectly, of course, through the sacraments. Um, in contrast to this would be a wicked man, not necessarily a wicked priest, but a wicked man in general, to where St. Saint, Saint Jude talks about this in his epistle. Jude one twelve says, they are like clouds without water. They get carried away by the wind. So this would be not only unholy people, but also heretics. So let's, let's talk here not just about priests, but let's talk about the individual faithful, the laity, like myself. What happens if I don't uh, fill myself with the water of grace, both habitual grace and actual grace? What happens if I don't pray daily? What happens if I don't fast? What happens if I don't frequent the sacraments? What happens if I don't live out my marriage vows? What happens? I am depleted. I am like a cloud without water. And without water, that, that, that cloud is going to just be swept away, swept away. Uh, it'll be just blown away. And, and this is where we get this, this, they are like empty clouds without water, um, even heretics. Um, he's describing heretics there. And then also, what does a cloud do? A cloud protects us from the rays of the sun that would normally 
hurt us, right? Uh, that would normally, we wouldn't be able to handle. So let's think of it that way. If there were no clouds, there might just be this, uh, we would have to have some coverage or the sun rays would just scorch us, right? Um, our land, our plants, our animals and ourselves, and it would be very difficult. And my understanding is that uh, what happens actually scientifically with clouds is they reflect some of those rays back into space. And so some of the rays come through to us, the necessary rays that we need, but some of the rays are kind of uh, reflected or deflected back into space. This in a very big sense is like the Eucharist for us, because if, if the complete power of our Lord God, um, the Almighty were to just shine on us, we wouldn't be able to take it. What happens to even the greatest of apostles, uh, Peter, James, and John, when they see the transfiguration, they can't take it. They have to fall down on that mountain. You know, when the transfiguration happens, they fall on their face because they can't take the brilliance. Um, same thing with Moses. Um, same thing with any of the saints. They just can't take this brilliance. And so what happens with these holy things, holy things for holy people? What happens for, you know, the Eucharist, for instance? The Eucharist allows the rays of grace to pass through in which we can receive. So it, 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 in a sense, the fact that Jesus is coming to us in this common piece of bread, what looks like this common piece of bread, and he's giving us the fullness of his grace, but under the appearance we can take, is that he's allowing the graces necessary to pass through, um, but we're not blown away. And also this allows us to have this anticipation, this growth to where we can grow in grace and then, of course, eventually reach the capacity in which to to be with him face to face. Um, I also like the symbolism. Uh, I like to receive, of course, the, the, our Lord uh, kneeling and receive uh, or kneeling and then receive him on the tongue. And as I'm in the kneeling position, um, the priest comes by and and what is the host going to do? It's actually going to descend. So it actually is like this cloud coming down and then resting on my tongue. Um, and, it, and it's beautiful, uh, bringing me the light I need, bringing me the moisture I need. Um, and so he comes to us as we need him. Um, very important to note, and I think this is in the Adorate, Adorote hymn by uh, Thomas Aquinas, where he says that on the cross, um, your glory is hidden. So when we look at the cross, we see the humanity of Christ but we don't see his glory, his divinity. In the Eucharist, we don't see his glory and divinity, but we also don't see his humanity. And so the, the Eucharist is this very simple, humble means, this very simple cloud in which is hovering before us, in which we cannot see his humanity, we cannot see his divinity, we just simply, in, in the eyes of faith, believe. And as we say, like the man in the gospel, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. So he's coming to us, but he gives us the light we need, gives us the grace we need, gives us the moisture we need. Um, I know that this has all been focused on Isaiah, but I do want to point to one thing in Romans and also one thing in Matthew. In Romans, St. Paul says that we must be of one mind and one mouth. One mind and one mouth. That all the apostles, the disciples, need to be of one mind and one mouth. Um, and then in Matthew... Um, Jesus says, what have you seen? Tell them, uh, tell John what you have heard and what you have seen. And so this is so important that we kind of tie these two together and, and we continue to see his light and receive his graces through Mary, through the priesthood, the sacraments, and most importantly, through the blessed sacrament. And so that we can all be seeing the same thing, thinking the same thing, speaking the same thing. So I, th I kind of think of, you know, what we have seen that actually then when we see something, we think about it. So what I have seen, then I am of one mind with others that have also seen Jesus, have seen these things. And then I preach the gospel. Why do I preach the gospel? And why do we preach just one gospel? Because we have heard one gospel. So this also kind of ties in, I think, to the, the, the unity that we have in how we are given grace. We are all, as Christians, given grace through Mary, our mother. We are all given grace through holy orders. And the sacraments become these means of grace for us. And most importantly, our sign of unity is in the Eucharist, in which our Lord is present with us. He says, I will be present with you until the end of time. 
Thank you for joining me for this Lexio on the go. Please take the time to visit linkedliturgy.com where you'll find fast, free, and faithful resources on the gospel. Also check out our online school, linkedliturgy.teachable.com. There are several videos on this YouTube channel, so please subscribe, share these videos with others, refer back to them. Um, thank you for watching. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.